Hello and welcome to Neurosurgery Written Board Crash Course. My name is Chen and in this video we'll be talking about the cellular organizations of the cerebellum. The cerebellar cortex is made up of gray matter that surround the white matter at its core. The cortex can be divided into three layers, an outer molecular layer, the middle Purkinje layer, and an inner granular layer. The molecular layer is just deep to the pia matter and contains very few cells. This layer houses cell bodies of stellate and basket cells. These cells have an inhibitory effect on Purkinje cells, these are the Purkinje cells, but are excited by parallel fibers of granule cells. These are the granule cells. And these are the parallel fibers. The Purkinje layer is deep to the molecular layer. It houses the Purkinje cells that we just talked about. And the Purkinje cells is the only efferent pathway from the cerebellum. The granular layer is the deepest layer of the cerebellar cortex and is just superficial to the white matter underneath it. It houses the granule cells and the Golgi cells. The granule cells are inhibited by Golgi cells. These are the Golgi cells and these are the granule cells. The granule cells are excited by the mossy fibers, which are afferent branches of the pontocerebellar and spinocerebellar tracts. And together, these three cells form a structure called the glomerulus that we'll, we'll talk about. So input to the cerebellum comes via only two cell types either the climbing fibers that excites the Purkinje cells directly or mossy fibers that indirectly excites the Purkinje fibers by exciting the granule cells first. And the granule cells will ascend into the molecular layer and form the parallel fibers which then excites the Purkinje cells. And the Purkinje fibers provide the only output, which is an inhibitory impulse. And these impulses will either go to vestibular or deep cerebellar nuclei. In the granular layer, there is a structure called the glomerulus. The glomerulus is a small intertwined mass of nerve fiber terminals in the granular layer. It consists of granule cell dendrites and Golgi cell axon terminals surrounding the incoming mossy fibers. As we talked before, the granule cells project from the granular cell layer through the Purkinje layer up to the molecular layer and it forms the parallel fibers that contact the Purkinje cells. And the Golgi cells synapse in the glomerulus and extends to the molecular layer where they synapse with parallel fibers. And the function of the glomerulus is the first processing station for the afferent nerve fibers entering the cerebellum. Input comes from mossy fibers and synapse with Golgi and granule cell fibers, and the information passed onto granule cells from the mossy fibers, while the Golgi regulate the glomeruli with inhibitory signals. So as we said earlier, there are only two types of cells that transmit signal to cerebellum, namely the climbing fibers and the mossy fibers. The climbing fibers are also called olivocerebellar climbing fibers, 
because it originates in the contralateral inferior olivary complex. They form an excitatory synapse in the molecular layer. And because these fibers only come from one structure, they're less abundant than the other type of mossy fibers. And the climbing fibers typically synapse onto the Purkinje cell dendrites directly. The mossy fibers is the input cells from all other structures. And so it is the largest input to the cerebellum. It forms excitatory synapses in the granule cell layers and form the glomerulus, as we talked about. And it indirectly excites the Purkinje cells, unlike the climbing fibers. Most of the mossy fibers are formed from the cerebropontocerebellar system that we will talk about in future slides. And other inputs includes the spinal cerebellar pathways, vestibular afferents, and the brainstem reticular formations. And a few of those are listed here. The fundamental points to be appreciated in considering the connections of the cerebellums are that as a rule, Afferent fibers terminate in the cerebellar cortex, and the efferent fibers arising in the cerebellar cortex will end in the cerebellar nuclei. And fibers arising in the nuclei then project to centers outside of the cerebellum. Now there are, of course, important exceptions to these rules and some incoming fibers will project directly to the cerebellar nuclei and some part of the cortex will directly provide output outside of the cerebellum. And a lot of those exceptions will have to do with vestibular system. All of the inputs and outputs to and from the cerebellum have to go through one of the three structures. And these are the superior cerebellar peduncle, the middle cerebellar peduncle, and the inferior cerebellar peduncle. And they will connect respectively. The superior cerebellar peduncle will connect to midbrain, the middle will connect to pons, and the inferior will connect to the medulla. And we'll go over each of these structures and their afferents and efferents in future videos. These are my references. I uh, hope you find these helpful, and I'll see you next time.